With the line of post-World War I Royal Navy battleships and battlecruisers of unrestricted tonnage coming to a halt with the G3s and N3s, the conference that would lead to the Washington Naval Treaty got underway. Back in the UK, reactions to ongoing developments were fairly swift. After all, the US and Japan both had ongoing naval building programs partway completed, the Colorados and Nagatos respectively, whilst the last British capital ship program that they'd undertaken was the Admiral-class battlecruisers, and of those, only Hood had been completed with the other three scrapped on the slipways. Thus, when it appeared that the 35,000-ton displacement limit was likely to be agreed, the Director of Naval Construction was asked to see what he could come up with that would meet this requirement in terms of a battlecruiser. The department worked fast, and three months before the treaty was even signed, a pair of designs had been sketched out and were under consideration by the Admiralty. The design series for battlecruisers had been progressively backing up the alphabet, so that meant the next letter after G would be F, and in keeping with the previous programs, F2 meant that the design had twin turrets and F3 had triple turrets. Obviously, the size, speed and firepower of the G3s would not be possible, and maximum weight savings were desired, so both designs moved the entire main battery forward of the bridge to concentrate the ship's citadel as much as humanly possible. In both cases, the gun turrets were laid out with A turret and B turret on the same level, one behind the other. The third turret, whether that would have been called C, X, Y, or some other horrifically mind-numbing permutation of the British turret naming system, would be super-firing over B. F2 was armed with six guns in three twin turrets, while F3 had three more guns for a total of nine, the turrets obviously being triples. Both designs displaced 35,000 tons, but the additional weight needed for the large turrets, barbettes and magazines on F3 meant that sacrifices had to be made to save weight elsewhere. The guns were to be of a new 15-inch 50 caliber type, but compatible with the shells that were used in the existing 15-inch 42 caliber gun found in the fleet. Secondary armament consisted of 12 6-inch guns in F2, which were placed in four twin turrets and four singles either side of the superstructure, with the pattern being single, twin, twin, single, going fore to aft. On F3, the secondary battery was only eight guns, deleting the four singles but leaving the twins. Both ships would carry four 40mm pom-pom installations for anti-aircraft defence. Power came courtesy of 112,000 shaft horsepower in F2, with a slightly reduced 96,000 shaft horsepower power plant in F3, resulting in a design speed of just under 30 knots for F2, whilst F3 was a knot slower. Armour was also reduced in the more heavily armed ship. F2 had 13 inches of belt armour angled at 18 degrees from vertical over the magazines, with 12 inches over the machinery. Barbettes were 13 inches thick, with 16 inch faces on the turrets, 12 inches on the conning tower, and no less than 7 inches of deck armour over the magazines, reduced to 3.25 inches over the machinery. F3, meanwhile, had a uniform 12 inch belt at the same inclination, and reduced the barbette thickness by an inch, and then kept the same protection for turrets and decks, but reduced the conning tower thickness to 9 inches. It was pointed out that F3 could claw back the knot in speed if everybody was prepared to use the lighter cruiser-style machinery, and this option remained on the table for as long as the design lasted. However, the designs were overtaken by the events occurring in Washington, Further developments indicated that Britain would be allowed to build a couple of ships to allow a balance against the Colorados and Nagatos. It appears the US Navy's own calculations reckoned that Hood had about the same fighting power as a Colorado, and hence the addition of two further ships would equate with the three Colorados that would be completed. For a mixture of prestige and practical purposes, these ships would have to be armed with 16-inch guns and it was immediately apparent that the battlecruiser concept could not maintain acceptable protection and firepower if taken in conjunction with the weight estimates that they had made for the 16-inch main armament of the G3s. Thus, the F2 and F3 designs were shelved, and work moved on to the O3 battleship, which would slightly increase protection along with taking on the 16-inch guns at the expense of about 6-7 to seven knots of speed, at least on paper. 
And whilst they were only under consideration for a few months, these designs provide something of a bridge between the G3 N3 plans and what would eventually become the Nelsons, which would also have an all-forward battery, but with B turret being the super-firing one. It is interesting to consider what might have been had these designs been proceeded with instead of the Nelsons, Given that their belt armour was only a single degree of inclination off of being almost identical to the South Dakota and Iowa classes, and they actually had slightly better deck protection, at least over the magazines, although worse protection over the machinery spaces, they would have been competitively armoured, therefore, in World War II. Their speed would have put them just a fraction faster than a number of Treaty-era battleships, and their armament would likewise have been competitive. The higher top speed may well have seen them heavily engaged in World War II, perhaps in addition to or instead of Hood at Denmark Strait, or perhaps with Cunningham in the Mediterranean. Alternatively, if for some reason they were deployed in exactly the same locations that the Nelsons were historically, then at the very least, Gneisenau is likely to have been sunk during Operation Berlin. But such are the vagaries of history. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.